Hello, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you're having a great, wonderful day. Now, I know you guys loved the last video, mostly because, you know, I enjoyed it. Um, but here's another thing, too. I think you guys are going to love this as well, considering the fact that, um, yeah, I think the mass dates are coming back. At least it's being shown that they're coming back. And, uh, uh, uh um and all that great stuff. So, that being said, let's get directly into the insanity of, you know, the current new mask mandates and the new COVID boosters that is coming our way. Uh, oh, we all know that COVID is, you know, a serious problem and we have to take it seriously and, you know, um, yeah, all that, all that great stuff. We have this here. Lionsgate brings back mask mandates in office. Uh, uh, is is it starting again? Hollywood Studio has instituted a mask mandate for its employees in light of the current COVID wave. Lionsgate sent an email to staff asking them to mask up on certain floors of its Santa Monica office after several employees caught the virus. The studio is also making employees to conduct screening before coming to the office. While this is obviously just one office of one studio, the move comes amid some national buzz about whether mask mandates might be returning as a variant EG5 has become dominant in the U United States. Yeah, it's become dominant as almost nobody is feeling the after effects of it for some god apparent reason. And now they're saying this is a bad thing. It's quite hilarious, honestly. Uh, the, ver the variety has caused an apparent boost in cases. Uh, it, um, in the LA Public Health Twitter feed says cases are rising in the area. And the CDC's website says hospital uh, admissions are up to 14% nationally this week. Yeah, experts have also said this Omicron descendant variant, which has been spreading domestically since April, has thus far shown to be no more of a cause of concern than previous variants. According to the report released by the New York Times, the new variety is expected to cause a major wave akin to the first Omicron outbreak. So, uh, so yeah, that's what's been going on. Now, here's the thing here that, I, that I've been noticing and, and stuff like that, is that... Uh, yeah, um, I understand that it might be a problem, but here's the thing. They may not be at, as bad, and I would agree with you, I don't think it's nearly as bad, and they just want to pump you through a death juice, but that's beside the point. We have this, that uh, new COVID boosters expected this fall. Why some doctors suggest holding off on getting your next booster until then. Now, YouTube, be calm and it's quiet. This is just me reading an article saying why doctors expect this and stuff. It's not absolute fact. And a lot of this stuff is just being allegations or reporting. So calm the fuck down. Uh, new f new f COVID boosters uh, pending approval will only target the coronavirus heiress strain and other XBB subvariants, which make up most cases in the U.S., causing some experts to encourage patients to wait for the new shots instead of getting a current bivalent booster. In, Ju in June, a Food and Drug, and Drug Administration panel recommended Pfizer, Moderna, and Novavax uh, formulate their new COVID booster shots to be monovalent and only protect against the XBB.5 variant and other XBB sublineages as opposed to the currently available shots, which were designed to combat earlier coronavirus strains. The Capundis are still awaiting FDA approval. The new vaccines are estimated to be ready by late September, but probably won't be widely available until October. XB.5, also known as Kraken, is a descendant of the Omicron variant and it was the most dominant strain in the U.S. earlier this year, but is now the eighth dominant strain. The, U the reason the FDA recommended non Mon violent boosters that protect against one strain is because most of the circuiting var variants are XBB descendants. As of June, over 95% of the COVID variants in the U.S. were, were XBB sublineages, the agency had in this report. So, yeah, 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 we have all this here. Uh, EG5 or Eris is an XB variant and the dominant strain, blah, 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 blah. Can I read through this? The second most common variant, LFL 1.5.1, made up 13.3% of cases in the country within this, within that same time period and is also an XBB variant. On Thursday, Moderna said it's a new COVID vaccine generated a robust immune response against Eris and the other XB variants. Uh, that's how many, many, many vaccines have been administered in the U.S. according to CDC data. However, only 17% of the population has received an updated bivalent booster. Okay, so that's what's been going on. We're not going to go too far in depth this exactly why, but, um, it says the, um, it's pretty much coming here. Um, and here's the thing, uh. I know I'm not going to be taking this. Of course, talk to your doctor uh, about these certain things is quite obvious. I'm not going to go say in here, you don't, 
don't take this or what have you. I'm not going to say that. However, I would say that everybody has the right to do their own type of health um, decisions, and that's the way it should always be. The having the government coming in and forcing you to do this is stupid and dumb. However, I am going to go over this because it seems that the Biden animation is to urge Americans to get new COVID-19 boosters. Because, you know, the Biden animation is totally not a dictatorship and totally not trying to force its people to take something. Of course, they're not forcing you, they're just urging you. But, of course, they want you to do as they're bidding, as, you know, as they go after their political opponents in every regard. Uh, we have this, the Biden administration plans to urge all Americans to get a booster shot for the coronavirus this autumn to counter a new wave of infections, a White House official said on a Sunday. The official said that while the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention are reporting an increase in the infections and hospital admissions from the virus, overall levels remain low. On Thursday, Moderna uh, said initial data showed its updated COVID-19 vaccine is effective against the errors of foreign acts of virus in humans. Moderna and other COVID-19 makers, Novak, Pfizer, and German partner Biotech uh, have created versions of their shots aimed at XBB.5, so variant. Pending approval from health regulators in the United States and Europe, the companies expect the updated shots to be available in one of the coming weeks for autumn vaccination season. We'll be encouraging all Americans to get those boosters in addition to flu shots and RSV shots. The video said we're from the U.S. Portrait of Technical Virus. Okay, yeah, but I, I'm not really a person that likes to get shots in general. Um, no matter when I get the flu shots, they say that it, when you're getting the flu, it's supposed to be safe the worse. I don't really care. It's, it, it, for the most part, as long as I think, as long as I'm healthy, I'll be fine. I haven't really had, I have not taken the flu shot before, and I've been 100% fine. Um, I'm normally healthy. I try to keep myself healthy. Now, for people that may be overweight or what have you, they may have more health complications. Maybe they should take it. I don't know. Uh, but again, this is something that you should make a decision for yourself. I'm not going to say that you should or should not take it. But again, this is not something that should be not actually force my opinions onto other people or force what I what you should do, especially if it comes down to medical stuff. I am not a doctor, so I'm not going to be claimed to be a doctor. What we have here is that Atlanta College reinstates COVID-19 mask mandate as students return to the city. A week after classes began, Morris Brown College is once again requiring students and a police to wear face masks on campus. The small private Atlanta College announced the mask mandate Sunday in a letter to fa faculty, staff, and students saying the requirement and other COVID-19 protocols will be in place for two weeks. The college cited reports of positive cases among students in the Atlanta University Center as a reason for the decision. Morris Brown President Kevin James told the Atlanta uh, Journal-Constitution in an email Monday that the college has received no reports of cases on its own campus yet. He described the steps as precautionary measures. Yes, of course. Well, uh, well, of course, you guys are probably going to make this more permanent. And that's probably what I'm going to go further on to here is probably going to show why it will be more permanent. The Atlanta University Center consists of several historically black colleges and universities on the city's west side. Morehouse and Spelman Colleges and Clark uh, Atlanta University began classes Wednesday. Morehouse's website states that the, con that the current alert level within the Atlanta University Center consortium is green, the lowest of four tier alert system. The green designation means the prevalence of the virus is minimal. The alert levels are determined based on the number of new cases in the past seven days on campus and the community, among other factors. Thousands of students are returning to Atlanta's college, college campuses just, co just as COVID cases are rising in Georgia. Numbers throughout the state have gone up in three weeks in a row, though the total number of known infections and hospitalizations remain low, the AGC reported last week. Of course, because it's not that, in my opinion, I don't think it's that big of a deal. And statistics in a lot of Octa doctors, including health officials, have said that said so. I'm going to, have to do a actual report on that at some point in time because there is a um, the whole with uh, uh, the the whole COVID thing where it that people have come out and said that it's all been lies, et cetera, et cetera, stuff like that. So I will do an actual video of that on some point in time. Um, uh, it's just I have to cover back all the other news. Um, thousands of students are returning to Atlanta's campuses just uh, so well that though. Um, and then we have Georgia Tech Stamps Health Service 17 reported 17 case, positive cases in the last two weeks. The Rear School recently posted a reminder on its website about COVID and campus health services of knowledge of the case cases spike at the start of each semester. Please come together and bring viruses with them. There's a lot of commoning and, and it spreads from person to person. So we typically see a bump at the beginning of the semester. So far, that just dissipates relatively quickly, said Dr. Benjamin Holton, Senior Director of Stamps, Health Service in the online post. 
I spoke to an MRA at University where the classes start Wednesday said the school is following standard operating conditions lower of its two COVID-19 responses. Students are asked to self monitor the first symptoms and follow the other healthy habits such as hand washing and covering coughs and sneezes. And these are all the symptoms and stuff like that they're going through and all that kind of stuff. But we have even more of these uh, colleges doing this. We have Rutgers set to disenroll students on August 15th if not compliant with COVID-19 COVID vaccine mandates. In March 25th, uh, 2021, Rutgers University became the first university in the nation to announce it will require students to take COVID vaccines for, for, for fall 2021 enrollment. Retired January 28th, uh, it's January 8th, 2021 announcement that with our stats of Human liberties and our history of protecting that the vaccine is not mandatory. What happened within a few short months that made Rutgers ultimately decide to hell with student civil liberties? Rutgers claimed that, and still does not to this is still to this day that has committed to health and safety for all members of this community. Even though on July 30th, 2021, Rochelle Walensky issued a press release claiming that COVID vaccines do not prevent infection or transmission, as if that press release is some figment or of our imagination. In January 2022, Rutgers announced a booster mandate with a compliance date set for January 31st, leaving students with a few options but to comply to stay enrolled. Now, what we have here, as of today, Rutgers remains one of the less than 100 universities out of out of 2,679 four-year colleges and universities that refuse to let go of COVID vaccine mandates. And according to anonymous sources, Rutgers is planning to enroll non-compliant students beginning on August 15th, 2023. Which that seems to have started about seven or seven or seven or seven or eight days ago. So you know it's already started. Perhaps its dogmatic adherence of two COVID vaccine mandates have been a long time coming. In 2020 and 2021, uh, we had uh, Rutgers had some of the strictest pandemic lockdown restrictions, even when co other colleges were finding ways to resume normalcy. Yeah. So um, this is going on that uh, these comp that this guy is just going to uh, be compliant. Uh, with these um, uh, COVID vaccine mandates. And we have this here. Uh, w before we go with this one, we're going to do this. That says Biden has already begun buying e COVID-19 equipment, hiring pandemic safety protocol enforcers. So we have the federal government has started purchasing COVID-19 equipment and hiring advisors on safety protocols. And there's speculation the Biden White House will reinstate pandemic air lockdowns and mandates and war room can reveal. The unearthed government contracts from entities, including the government de of defense, show millions in taxpayers' funds being used to purchase COVID-19 equipment, as such as test kits. Some of the contracts, which are traceable via the federal government's spending database, are even scheduled to begin in future months, such as September and October. The DOD, for example, gave Hologic Sales and Service LSC a $1.5 million contract beginning on October 1st, that's set to conclude in May 2024. The federal database reveals the funds are, are for hologic and COVID testing in services in support of the Department of Pathology and Managing uh, Army Medical Center, Tacoma, Washington, uh, 98431. So, you know, this is what's going on here. The Department of Veterans Affairs also inked a $2 million contract with Abbott Molecure Incorporated beginning on, on September 22nd. So to conclude, in September of 2024, the contract will provide testing services for viruses including COVID-19. So, you know, all that great stuff there. Now we'll go to here, um, which is a little bit more of a sketchy website, but it kind of gives a bit more insight on what's going on. Biden is already buying COVID, COVID equipment and hiring pandemic safety and protocol enforcers. This is from Natalie Winters, though. And Natalie Winters goes on to say the federal government has already begun buying COVID-19 equipment and hiring consultants to enforce pandemic air safety protocols. Some of these contracts are scheduled to begin in September and October. So we're going to go over here and then the USA spending. And you're going to see that all this seems to be true, that they're actually from, this is from the USB, USA spending.gov. So you get to see all the stuff they're actually spending the money here, 1.3 million, all this stuff. Uh, so yeah, it seems to be relatively pretty true. Uh, so it doesn't seem that, th that, these, that the company is actually lying here uh, or what we have for the war room. So it seems that this may be deemed to come back to our doorstep, ladies and gentlemen. And I think that uh, this may not go as well as the Biden mission may be planned because I don't think a lot of people are going to be doing this, especially with the expose that's been out with it. I will cover a story of poverty sometime this week because I haven't, I've been beating around to get to it. I've been beating around to get to a lot of, of stories. And hopefully with this schedule change, I can do that. Uh, all right, guys, that's it for the video. Like, subscribe, share, as always.
Take care.